So uh, I'm just very grateful. This is the prize of my life. Best decision. <laughs> she had a lot of patience with me, I can tell you that. And uh, I'm real grateful. So you see a picture up there of Chuck Pierce. And uh, Trisha has been on Chuck's ministry team for a long time. And uh, we, we're connected to Glory of Zion. We, we really honor and respect what they're doing there, along with many other people that we know through that stream. And uh, last Sunday, during their Sunday service, Chuck asked Linda Heidler to come up and share a dream that she had. But Linda Heidler is, has had some of the most outstanding dreams that have affected me, and I've been able to hear through them. Uh, as I said, the last two weeks, I was in intense intercession, so I called Linda in on, I think it was Thursday morning, and I said, you know, I feel like uh, God is saying some things, and we need breakthrough into, I know what I've been warring, uh, because I did get high enough to see the enemy, and uh and she said, I had a dream, and I said, she began to share it, and I asked her, would she come and share it this morning? So welcome, Linda Heidler. Well, in my dream, I had gotten a letter from my mother, and my mother passed away like over 10 years ago, but um, she sent me a letter. And in the letter, it said, here is what they are trying to accomplish through COVID. She said, first of all, poverty. And she said, a lot of people have lost a lot. But even after recovery begins, a spirit of poverty is going to, like, have been entrenched in the nation. And then she said, infirmity. And she said, many people are sick with this. But after this is over, a spirit of infirmity will have attached to many people. And then um, she said isolation. And again, many people feel like or do need to be isolated. But even after they don't need to be isolated anymore, they will continue to isolate because a spirit will come on them that makes them feel like that's what they need to do. And then she said uh, they also are uh, attempting to take over uh, communication systems and transportation systems. And, you know, in my dream, it's like I was reading this, reading this letter, and I began to wake up, and I felt like I still had it in my hand. And my first thought was, I need to write my mother a thank you note for telling me this. And then I began to wake up and realized I didn't have a letter and I wasn't going to be writing her thank you note. So, Wow. But we're going to thank the Lord for sending you that revelation. Um, so um, when, when I heard that dream, you know, the Lord said to me, he says, I, I really want you to start studying, you know, infirmity, poverty, isolation. And... Um, you know, because we, we hear everything that's happening and, you know, the media has scared the living daylights out of half the people in the world, right? And so, but the Lord said to me, whose voice is louder? Whose voice are we listening to? We have to hear what the Word of God is saying and we have to know the Word in order to hear what the Word of God is saying, amen? So, um, you know, so I decided today that I wanted to take the portion of, of infirmity because infirmities try to hit us in many different ways. And so you'll see infirmity doesn't just mean sickness, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that in a minute. But God wants us to walk in complete victory. I'm not saying you cannot use, you know, you have to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. You have to do what God is telling you, okay? I'm not going to do what the media is telling me to do. I'm just saying. You know, it cracks me up. I was listening to the CD. I, was, I read something on CDC, and they said, now because of the holidays, if you 
uh, had been tested and, and you were, um, you know, you're not, you don't have COVID, you no longer have to quarantine 14 days. Now it's seven days. See, COVID knows it's the holiday season. So COVID knows you want to be with your family and get this thing over with, you know? I mean, it's, it's, re it's a joke to me. It's ridiculous. But again, I'm not saying that, that people haven't gotten ill. I'm not saying any of that. But what I am saying is that it is a real thing, but it's also, you know, there, there are health issues, you know, that we have to look introspectively, we have to do our due diligence in, in staying healthy, right? Um, but I'm also, again, hear what I'm saying, whose voice is louder in your life? Is it the spirit of the Lord or what the world is saying out there? And again, you have to, I'm not saying to you, if you feel you need to take your precautions or be isolated, please hear what I'm saying. But I'm going to preach the word because the word of God has set me free and, and God has given me Psalm 91. God has given me scriptures to stand upon for my healing. Even if I get COVID, I think I had it in March. I coughed for a whole month. So I didn't know it. And then I found out I was exposed to somebody that had COVID. So, you know, listen, God is able to get us through and to get us over to the other side. All right. So this isn't a condemning message. This is a healing message. I don't want to hear that you're saying that I'm telling you not to isolate or not to wear your mask. Do whatever you want. Do whatever the Lord's telling you. I'm just giving you the word of the Lord here, okay? So part of this, um, this dream, you know, when I started to look up the spirit of infirmity, um, well, let me just back up. God is a God of covenant, and, and I'll elaborate on that in a minute. But, but we have a covenant with God. It's not a contract. We have a covenant with God. And that's an inheritance that we have. And, and some of the promises there are healing, right? That, that God, Jesus Christ, was brutally beaten, whipped, you know, I mean, stripped. He, was, he had the crown of thorns on his head. I mean, brutally beaten and died on the cross, but rose again for our healing and our deliverance, right? So one of his, his redemptive names is Jehovah Rapha, that he, he says, I am the Lord God who heals. And um, so... I thought, well, amen, Lord. And I love studying all his names, and, and, it, and his names describe his character and, and what he has for us and what he always wants to do for us. And he wants to give us peace. He wants to give us healing. He wants to bring deliverance into our lives. He wants to bring reconciliation and restoration. He's a good God. We don't have to live in defeat. We don't have to live in a life that's hopeless and faith, a fear-filled, faithless and depressed. We don't have to live that way. That Jesus died on a cross for abundant life. Now, now issues happen. The Bible says many are the circumstances. Or, no, I'm sorry. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He says, but I deliver you out of them all. But the Lord gives us strategy in the word how to overcome. Okay. So let me just explain to you uh, covenant. Well, all right. I have it up. See, this, this stuff is, I'm just a preacher. I'm not good at this stuff. Right. So, all right, infirmity, the Greek word is asten, astensia, which means want of strength, weakness, infirmity, frailty, and sickness of soul. Now, that really stuck out at me, is sickness of soul. And so, we're going to really talk about that today. And so, because some of us may be really battling with sickness of soul right now that's causing infirmity in our lives. So uh, just so that for some of you who might not know, um, covenant means, oh, wait, where do I have this thing? Oh, it, the, the Hebrew word is berith, and it's based on unconditional love sealed by the blood and sacred oath that creates a relationship in which each party is bound by specific undertakings in each other's behalf. The covenant is mediated by the Lord Jesus Christ and established by his blood. A covenant is different than a contract. A covenant is made with an oath, a solemn affirmation, binding oneself to the fulfillment of the words spoken while appealing to God. It is an agreement ratified by God who cannot lie and will never abandon what he promises. The bottom line is 
There's always bloodshed when there was a covenant that was made. And so Jesus was brutally beaten. He shed his blood. He ratified this covenant for us. He, he, actually, the, the Old and New Testament, when you look this up, they, they refer to it as the Old and New Covenant. And so this covenant that God has for us is one of resurrection life. He's saying, listen, I died on a cross so that you don't have to live in defeat. You might say, yeah, but I am living in defeat. Well, we're going to talk about that today and how to not live in defeat. In Psalm 89, 34, in the Passion, it says, how could I revoke my covenant of love that I promised David? For I've given him my word, my holy, irrevocable word. How could I lie to my loving servant David? In another portion of scripture, it says, my covenant I will not alter. You know, he's a God of covenant. It's eternal. The Bible says that he magnifies his word over his name. It's, it's everlasting. And then the cool thing is, is Jesus is the word. So when you're meditating on the word and you're speaking and declaring the word, that's Jesus. We have that resurrection life that comes within us. See, this is a supernatural gospel. If you try to look at it from a linear perspective or just like an intellectual thing, you're going to get confused. Because when we became born again... We are, the Spirit of God is what resides within us. The Spirit of God came within us. But now our soul has to get healed. I mean, I just wish my soul just got healed, but it didn't, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, you know, we all have our issues here. And Rich, you better not laugh. Um, we all have our issues here, some more than others, Rich, right? So, anyway, so we all have our issues. But, but God... And, you know, the mercy of God is new each day. And that's the thing that I love about the Lord. He's a God of love. He's a God of forgiveness. His mercies are new, as I said, every morning. 